All right, guys, what's going on? We've got War 4 of Season 33, and today 4 Loki is going to be facing Noxious Smoke, or NXS. Um, these guys have uh, big rosters. They place high in AQ. They have a lot of rank 4s. Um, so yeah, I mean, like, we have definitely matched them before. We usually beat them in Alliance form. But let's see how this one goes. Um, so I'm expecting, um, a more difficult defense just as far as, like, you know, how many rank 4s they're placing. Uh, they banned Corvus, Hercules, and Ghost, so Quake was available this war. And any time that Quake is available to us, um, we take full advantage of it. We don't have a ton of quake players we don't want to assign too many quakes or assign quakes to people who aren't like fully comfortable using her in war but we have a couple of really really good quake players like mad cat and um since he can't be in too many places at once i usually bring my quake in even though my quake gameplay is um pretty mediocre especially compared to his so um yeah, just looking at their map, I don't see anything that we haven't seen before. Um, you know, Weapon X, I guess, on 23. We have seen that before, um, but never when Quake has been allowed. So that's an easy Quake fight. If Quake isn't, um, or if Quake is banned, you can use um, Nimrod. I used him last season for that fight, and it went really, really well. Um, I think I uploaded it, pretty sure. Um, and then we've got a Nimrod boss, of course, which is a very easy Spider-Man 2099 fight. Um, I started assigning that, I think, last season. Um, because I tested it out in the off-season and Vega started taking it. And so, yeah, nothing looks, uh, super out of the ordinary here. So, let's see here. We're obviously bringing in Omega Red and Sabretooth, and we are bringing in Quake as well. And I'm going to be starting off on path two in section one. Um, this is just going to be a dragon man. So if Quake were banned, um, it would just be a torch fight. But she's not. So I'm just going to parry him right away. Get the power charge off of him. I'm going to parry myself back into the corner a couple times. And, uh, yeah, I think I do make a couple little mistakes here, but you can see that, that the concussion timer lines up pretty much perfectly with his, uh, power charge timer, so he is not going to get his power gain back for the rest of the fight. It's just completely turned off. And, um, yeah, Quake with class advantage and half or full suicides does really good damage. And right there I made a mistake and I let off my heavy, and I... I think it might happen one more time, but uh, yeah, Quake is, if you play in tier 1 and you don't know how to use Quake, um, I mean she's not for everybody obviously, we have a lot of people who don't really have the desire to learn how to play her in 4 Loki, but um, she's definitely a champion that's worth learning, especially for Alliance War Health Pools. So here I'm just going to throw on... Um, the other half of my Suicide Masteries for the rest of this war, and I'm going to be taking this Immortal Abomination on, um, this next node here, I forget the node number, but this has the Strike Counter Fury as well, and, uh, Power Focus 1 and Brute Force. I have no clue why he's here, um... You know, you generally don't want to push Man-Thing above a bar of power. So, yeah, don't don't quite understand the placement, but I was definitely grateful for it. Um, if they would have flipped those two placements, that might have been better. Um, okay, so this is going to be Man-Thing again on node 20. We take him every war. Um, in other battle groups, um, I think that we have, like, Diablo take him. I know Doom can take him. Oh, right there, I made a mistake, I guess. Um, but I don't. I would personally not want to use Doom. I wouldn't want to assign Doom to anyone since I wouldn't want to take the fight. I've seen it done, but it goes on a lot longer than uh, this fight goes on with Omega Red, so might as well just use Omega Red. 
Um, here he's gonna get the unstoppable armor, which is totally fine because uh, he's just gonna die here <laughs> um, to the spore damage. With Doom, there's just a lot of like, you know, if he throws a special attack, you get poisoned. If he has any furies, you're, you know, that poison ticks for a lot. It's just not worth the risk in my opinion. And then um, this is gonna be path three in section two. So it worked out for me this time to actually wait for the global to go down before I took this fight, which is nice because I don't have to worry about him going unstoppable like in the middle of me quaking. It does throw quake off quite a bit. And I just quaked uh, with full suicides here. Um, the issue with doing that is normally is just that she loses so much health. So if it's a really long fight, like you, like a mini boss, you want the extra damage from uh, running Double Edge and Liquid Courage, but your health will just, you lose more health from suicides than you gain with willpower when you're boosted. So um, you run the risk of dropping down into assassin range, but we don't have to worry about that here. Um, I don't think that I was like fully boosted here because these next two fights are uh, pretty easy and straightforward. So yeah, I'm just going to finish up this fight. It's been about a minute. I think he's one quake cycle away from going down. And yeah, I just let off my heavy here to finish him. So that's the end of the fight. And then this uh, last fight of the war here for me is going to be Craven. So I was a tiny bit worried about this, but um, just because I, I don't usually fight him without guidance, but he just goes down so quickly. You just want to basically bait out uh, heavy attacks, interrupt them, stay close. Um, see, normally right there, I would want to hit into his block a little bit. Um, and he does reduce the duration of non-damaging debuffs by like 10% for each one that you place on him. But you can see, you can actually just kill him in a single carry. So, uh, on like path fights, he's not bad at all. Maybe on like mini boss or shared fights where he would have more health, he would be a little bit more challenging, but not, uh, not on path fights. So... That is the end of my war. I'm just going to move up here. Um, I don't remember the exact circumstances here. Um, I know BG3, like, we won our battle group. Um, but we ended up losing this war by one death. It was actually two deaths, because if they would have died one less times, so they still would have beaten us on fight duration. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, kind of a bad war from us. Again, I don't remember exactly what happened. I feel like... At the beginning of the season, we just um, were making a lot of like small errors, and you know this is just kind of what normally happens. It takes us a few wars to to clean up and um, and start winning. So yeah, um, unfortunately, we did lose this war. If we would have ordinarily, if an alliance dies eight times against us, we will win. Um, it just didn't happen this time, unfortunately. So. Yeah, hopefully we can get back on track, fingers crossed, and I will see you guys in the next one.